Welcome back, fellow knights! What's up, guys? It's Apollo here, and it's time. It's time for another glorious siege battle. But this time, we're at Isengard. So this, of course, is Third Age Total War Reforged. This is the latest patch. It's super easy to download. They made it really convenient. You don't have to do multiple patches and stuff. It's just one download, one install. Really easy. Uh, so this is a bit of a what-if situation. So let's say that the story is just like the movies where the free people say, like, destroy Sauron, but they don't quite go into the east. So let's say that the east and the south, so we have Harad and the Easterlings, Umbar, Khand, they all unite together to attack the west and kind of, like, rebring, like, to, to bring an old glory back, you know, the glory of Sauron, even though he's kind of gone. So think of all these evil settlements, even though Isengard originally wasn't evil, uh, it became evil because of um, Saruman. Uh, but basically, they're all back trying to retake these settlements and bring back the glory of Mordor. Uh, and I'm sure there's some orcs, but there's no orcs in this battle. But this is a battle between good and evil. Uh, so right now, they're just bombarding the walls, getting ready for a glorious fight. Uh, now, it wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense that Gondor is defending. Maybe a combined force of Rohan and Gondor, because Isengard's actually really close, pretty much in Rohan territory. That's why there was such, you know, that, that's why there were such enemies uh, in the movies and whatnot, because they were so close together. And that's why uh, Saruman went with the pikes to counter the enemy Cav. Uh, but yeah, anyways. Uh, Gondor is going to be defending Isengard, and if we look at the attackers, we are getting some frame issues. That's because the walls are crumbling right now. It does uh, slow down the frames. There we go. The walls fall. That looks pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, we've got Umbar. We actually have two Umbar armies, one commanded by Jane Monster, and the other one really close by, by Vizlak. Uh, so yeah, they've got some really solid units, and that actually looks really cool. So. Yeah, th these forces look amazing. Uh, the settlement looks amazing. Uh, if we go back over to the other side, we have Khand, commanded by Von Mountain, who has some really sick units over here. These guys almost look like gladiators. Pretty sweet. Uh, I think he's also got the really cool looking infantry, almost like Japanese infantry. Looks awesome. Uh, the Varig Warriors. And, oh, they're still knocking down some walls. The final attacking force is going to be Harad. So we kind of fly over this way now. Of course, Harad bringing the Southron pikemen. Uh, we also have the Beast of War. So the the Mumakil. But this is there's a new beast we haven't seen yet before. Check this out. Boom! Look at these guys. The Muhad War Beast. So it's like a this creature's like a blend of a warthog and a rhino. It's it's pretty amazing. So yeah, I can't wait to see them in action. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, back. Oh, check out these guys. Muad Warriors with the shields. I've never seen that before. So yeah, you can see that they added a ton of new uh, new units and what. I still haven't seen the the drummer trolls yet. I can't wait to see them. So they're now they're now shifting over to their ally. I think it's because they wanna they wanna stay joined together. Now there is a bad thing about or there's a con I guess. There's pros and cons. Uh, there is a con by uniting with this ally. It's gonna make it easier for the defenders to defend. Because look at this force. He had a long force here ready to defend. Uh, but now this force is probably going to group up with his ally and they can concentrate their forces in one area. Uh, I think it would have been better to just kind of separate the forces. But we'll see how this plays out. I'm no expert. Uh, so if we look at the defenders, we have, of course, Gondor commanded by Pharaoh. And then back over here, we have Gondor commanded by New Player 195. And I believe the final army is Baconfish 302. So, and I'm pretty sure that's all the the armies here. So yeah, it's three versus four, which makes sense. So uh, right now we continue to wait as these forces bombard the walls of Isengard. Uh, the troops are now getting up on the walls. We got some Dunedain Rangers ready to fire down and defend these walls. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think we're just gonna wait here until they start to uh, breach and take the walls. Okay, so after a couple minutes of bombarding, it seems like Khand is actually going to be the first ones to move in. Uh, they have a really nice force here that's pushing up on these, uh, these circ this giant circle wall. Uh, you can also see the defenders are starting to shift their troops, uh, trying to uh, mirror up with the attacking forces, ready to uh, hold the walls here. They've got the great Gondor infantry 
just uh, preparing for a great fight for their life. They're like, we lost Orthanc once, we're not gonna lose it again. Uh, but now over on this side, we also have the the enemy forces, or the I'm sorry, not because we're neutral here. We're we're not we're not biasedly picking a side. So we have the attacking forces uh, ready to scale the walls, uh, and then we've got more and more troops trying to rush their way. Some axemen. I think it would have been better to keep the axemen. Oh, actually, you know, we've got another a Gondor. So we actually have four Gondor armies. Okay, this is I'm sorry, I missed one. It's Lango. Uh, so Lango is also leading Gondor as well, but he's sending up some um, some axemen, which I think would have been better on on the ground because they can get a good charge off, which axemen usually have pretty good charge bonus. Uh, so leaving them on the walls, they're not going to do bad on the walls, but I think they would have been a little bit more effective on the ground. But then again, if the enemies take the walls and then set up their archers, they could just pick off those axemen. So it's really a situational kind of thing. Archers are now set up right behind the wall. This is a pretty glorious battle here, guys. Archers gonna fire down. I saw them firing some arrow, uh, some arrows as I was talking about the axe. There we go. Yeah, so the archers are exchanging arrows. Look at that. Hold, archers, hold! And then spears are coming in to fill in the gaps now that the walls are down. The men must be the walls of Isengard. Uh, we got more equipment coming up the, uh, up this way. Ladders are coming up. All the siege towers are in place over here. I think Khand is waiting for his allies so they can strike together at the same time. Uh, but yeah, things are getting pretty intense right now. Now, oh, we got a catapult fire coming down. Going after, oh, a rocket. They brought rocket launchers. And we also have a catapult over here from Harad. Uh, who's trying to open up some holes here. They're really trying to make it difficult for uh, for Gondor, which is exactly what they need to do. Um, oh, hey, Ramas Ekor Garrison. Uh, that's the that's actually the outer wall of Minas Tirith. Uh, Minas, excuse me, Minas Tirith, uh, which they don't show in the movie. Uh, you do hear uh, King Theoden mention it. Uh, it. He says, once we get past the wall, that's what he means. It's a very really subtle line that's easy to miss in the movies, but yeah, they don't really show it, which makes sense because, you know, movies, they only have a set, like, it's a completely different medium compared to a book. Obviously, with the book, you can, you know, really explain stuff better. That's why books tend to be better than uh, movies because you get the juicy details. Uh, but here comes a little cap charge from some cataphracts going after, oh, I'm sorry, guys, got a little steam message there. All right, sorry. Yeah, again, sorry about that. I had to turn off my steam. So yeah, fantastic charge uh, into the garrison force. It's a light infantry, so it's to be expected. They're gonna lose a lot to cataphracts. I mean, they just don't have the mass to withstand such a brutal charge with such a heavy. I mean, I mean, could you imagine getting charged by a cataphract? It's so easy to look at it in the game, you know, and just be like, oh, whatever, no big deal. But you know, when you're actually near a horse. Let's just talk about this for a second. When you're near a horse, those things are huge. Now put a ton, and let's, okay. And those horses aren't even bred for war. So they, they can be even bigger and stronger. And then put like full armor on that horse with the, hor the, the rider who's also on full armor charging into you with like a hundred other horses that are just like that. It would, it like, it's the tanks of the, uh, you know, the time of sword and shield basically uh, they are just brutal so you know unless I was a pi even if you were a pikeman I would be terrified because you know the first wave might not make it but the second or third line might make it through your pikes uh, which would be brutal uh, but anyways uh, Umbar he's got Castamere's chosen infantry starting to clear up some of this wall pretty intense uh, you know breach battles over here fighting over the openings of this wall as well so things are getting pretty spicy over here uh, with uh, with Umbar, and they're cleaning it up. They are cleaning it up. Uh, Gondor are having to rely on the archers down here to uh, pepper pepper down these forces, which is smart uh, because Umbar has some really elite forces, and you don't want to lose troops in close combat to elite forces. Why not sit back and shoot them with arrows? Uh, which is exactly uh, what he's doing. Another uh, Ramas Ekor. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it, but. Uh, yeah, another uh, garrison force, which I think is pretty cool. Some Gondor getting some new units. Really awesome. So yeah, we've got lots of archers just spraying down arrows. Uh, so the attackers are doing what they can. 
these forces are just kind of checking each other out. There they go. Now they're colliding. This, uh, this is going to be a, a Karendra Swordmasters. These guys are going to be pretty tough to kill. So they're... Oh! Oh, no! Okay, where is this? Whoa, whoa, whoa. They're charging... Oh, we missed the Muma kill charge. But it doesn't look like it was that effective. Oh, no. King Strategist. King Strategist, who is leading Harad, throws in his Muma kill. Now he's throwing in these... Oh, at least we get to see them. There they go. I mean, it's just like Cav. But they look cool. So yeah, King Strategist throwing in his Muma kill like that. It's just disaster for him. Never, never, guys, throw in your Muma kill alone. Usually, like, you're probably thinking, like, why? Oh, listen to that. That's awesome. You're probably thinking, well, why? They're giant, they're basically giant elephants. They can hold their own. Actually, they can easily get focused down. Elephants are big targets. Uh, so, yes, they're big, which is good, but also they're big targets for javelins. So you want to try to hold off the Muma kill until a lot of the Gondor forces are busy fighting other units and then charge them in. Oh, my God. I love that rally. So a very, very bold move here with the War Beast going after the enemy artillery, going after the uh, the Pelagir Marines, just trying to soften them up, making it a little bit easier for the infantry. Uh, there they go. Now they're sending in the Muhad warriors and the trollmen of Harad. They're going to finally get them into the fight, and there they go. I love the Harad rally. That's sick. They got it straight from the movie. It's awesome. Nomadic warriors coming in. This wall looks like it's gonna hold. There it is again. God, that is a that is a kind of terrifying rally there. But it, I think they're gonna hold here pretty effectively. Look at that. Yeah, Gondor is well well defended on this side. Uh, so they might. Well, it's pretty even over here. Look at that. Oh, the walls of Isengard. Archers trying to you know support the troops here. I mean, archers are just, they're just going to be a, a really important key to this defense. And they've got to try to stay alive. Uh, really soften up these these infantry units. Casimir's Chosen still trying to soften up this Gondor infantry. Uh, it looks really good for the attackers over here. Umbar seems like uh, they have the, the situation under control. Now, they are still losing a lot of men. Um, because of all the skirmishing capabilities of Gondor, who are just, you know, making Umbar look a little bit like Swiss cheese in some areas. Uh, but overall, like in the walls and stuff, and they look at they've got a lot of reserves over here. We got the Corsair Blackguard, um, the Chosen, more Chosen over here. So he's got a lot of uh, elites uh, that can, you know, charge in and do some damage. J Monster going in with a lot of forces over on this side as well. You know, it's, it's really important, especially on a map like Isengard, you want to try to, I mean, it's such a long wall that you want to really, like, push on multiple breaches. Make Gondor guessing where you're going to go next and just make him stretch out his forces and you will find a weak spot in the defense. I mean, there's no way. It doesn't matter who the player is. There's going to be a weak spot that you can break through. You just got to find it quickly and attack uh, without hesitation. I think this is a bit of a weak spot here. If they can keep pouring in troops, they can easily flank around the Gondor infantry. And this is just light infantry. Also, uh, over here, this is probably the strongest point. Uh, it is good that Khand is sending over troops to keep these guys occupied. Uh, you know, it keeps them in place so they're not sending over reinforcements to other parts of the fight. Uh, but back over here, this is also another weak point, I think. I mean, I'm... So oh, man, look at the fight over here. Just madness. And then you've got the Muma kill in the back. That is awesome. That looks so good. Oh, and the Ballista trying to support the brave men of Gondor holding, uh, holding this settlement. Oh, nice. The guards of Asgiliath. Gods of Osgiliath making a mass route over here. The Southron pikemen stand no chance against the guards. Whoa! There goes the artillery. Another important tool of bringing down defenders. Uh, so we're going to see if that artillery will come into play. We also have some fire arrows coming down from Gondor. Just trying to get these uh, brave men of Harad to break. 
Oh, look at the mass chain route. They don't want anything. They're like, you know what? I don't even care. I don't even care about the ore thing. So they're just out of there. I assume that's what the Haraja men sound like. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so yeah, they, they... I guess they captured their walls somewhere. I mean, it's a long wall. It's like, how can you say you captured all of the walls? I'm actually pretty impressed by these new rad footmen. They're doing a pretty good job of chewing up Gondor. I honestly b thought that Gondor would easily hold here, but it's actually a pretty even fight. Let's go back over to Umbar. Let's see how things are progressing over here. I mean, it seems like they are, yeah, they're out maneuvering, now going after the Fountain Guard, which is a very elite unit. And they've got them right where they want them. They've got them surrounded. We do have archers up here putting down suppressing fire. Nice. Going after these Corsair Blackguards. Actually an excellent target to go after. I mean, that's what they need to go for. Uh, the defenders, if they want any chance of winning this one, they've got to focus down the elites. It's not the minor troops. Basically, the lesser troops are just there to absorb that ammo. Uh, so as a defender, very nice shots here. As a defender, you obviously want to um, be very cautious with your ammo and make sure you go after very, uh, very important targets. Now we got the cataphracts moving in once again. You don't want them in the back lines. This could wreak havoc here. And sure enough, they are going to go after archers. But we do have a lot of arrow fire focusing down these cataphracts. That heavy armor. Oh, they take out one of Gondor's generals. And I think that was possibly a general in the fountain guard. And now they've got a, an opening here that Umbar is going to take advantage of. And push in their troops and try to surround Gondor. Cut down these, uh, these forces before they can fall back. Uh, now this is the town center which is a brutal town center because it's just so open. So it's it's not like they can exactly fall back and defend the town center because they're just going to be open to archer fire. I honestly believe if they want any chance to win this battle, they've got to hold the walls. If they lose the walls, then they lose the battle. That's what it's going to come down to. Um, but it looks like they're losing the walls. So it's not looking great for Gondor, but the balance of power is dead even, guys. Uh, it, they've killed more of Gondor than Gondor's killed of the attackers, which is not a good sight. It's not a good sign, I should say. It's not a good sight either. It's a pretty bloody sight indeed. Um, but yeah, they can... The defenders can still turn this one around. They just they need, to, they need to win on on the other side, which it looks like they are. Bacon fish leading the, uh, the charge over here on this defense. And I think... Harad needs to find another way in. He needs to bring down this wall. It's at 95%. I mean, we saw him firing some shots into the Gondor infantry. Is he out of ammo? He's got to be out of ammo now. Yeah. He should have used that shot. I think it would have been worth more to use that ammo to bring down this wall instead of going after infantry. So now we got this, like, Kingdom of Heaven situation where the two forces clash here. And they're trying to uh, use pure force, pure brute force to hold back or break through the uh, the other forces. Same thing over on this side as well. Gondor needs to win, uh, win quickly here. So he can then send his reinforcements over to the other side. Uh, Gondor is actually holding pretty well over on this side against J Monster. He's actually falling back now. Massive retreat because look at this. J-Monster has broken through on this flank. And now they're pushing to support their comrades. Look at this. Massive. Look at that. Okay, so massive, massive uh, umbar push. Look at it. You can see, you can see them so clearly. All the dark because they're wearing that dark armor. And you can see Gondor obviously more of a silver armor. And you can see the two forces about to clash here. So this is huge for the attackers because now they're going to be able to push and support their... their Oh, the artillery, though. They're going to support their allies over on the other side. you got to support Harad, who is just getting destroyed at two choke points. Now we got troops in the rear guard of uh, Bacon's army, I believe. Or new player who's trying to hold back the reinforcements. Buying time for these archers who are lining up. Check this out. This is pretty sweet. 
Oh, and more artillery hits. Killing a lot of enemy forces there. Are these guys break? Yes, they are breaking the Umbar flank. Umbar might want to slow down here a little bit. Uh, let his men rest a little bit before just, you know, just charging them in. I understand why J Monster charged them in like that. Or was that J Monster? No, that is Vizlak. I understand why he charged them in. He's trying to really get Gondor um, by surprise. But after a couple troops are starting to break, he might want to slow it down a little bit. Reform his forces, get them ready, and then charge in. You don't want to get too reckless. Oh! Going after that artillery. Very cool. Gondor reforming over on this side. The Marines forming up as well. They've got to make a new battle line here. Uh, they pretty much wiped out. I mean, we still have some Marauders over here. Do they throw axes? What are they doing? Look at this stance. I think they do throw some big old axes. It's awesome. Uh, but yeah, he still has some elite forces over here. And I think they're waiting. Basically, I, Khan and Harad, I think they're waiting for their allies to put pressure on the other side. That way, Gondor, which he's already doing this, Gondor is going to peel troops away. Oh, and they take out another Gondorian general. So they're going to try to, you know, basically wait for them to be weaker over on this side. And then they might go in full force, uh, which will cause some issues for Gondor. Gondor now holding. They've got to do something. They've got to break an army here quickly. Uh, but it's not looking good for Gondor. The bounce of power is still even. But pos position-wise, it's not looking great. Not looking great for Gondor. There goes the charge. Axemen of... Well, the Axemen of Laz, Lazarnak. <laughs> Whatever. The Axemen. The charge it in. So that was a nice little charge there. Again, getting taking advantage of that shock infantry uh, charge. Though they're going to have a tough time fighting the uh, heavily armored... You know? That unit? <laughs> I don't know. I'll never get that name right. Gondor Infantry, they're making their way. They're chewing up these... Uh, uh, new, new, oh my god, I know this one. New, num, num, what the heck? I'm having like a seizure or something. New, Numnorian? Why can, holy crap, I like completely forgot this name. New, new, it's like... Forget it. Forget it. For just forget it. Okay, wow. This is embarrassing. Okay, whatever. Uh, I'm having a brain fart, guys. I completely forgot how to split. The shield guard. Okay. I, I, whatever. We're gonna move on. <laughs> oh my god. Osgiliath, uh, they're supporting their Gondor infantry against the shield guard. Uh, I, I just said this unit's name like the last Third Age video. How did I forget? I'm like, you ever have that brain fart? You ever have a brain fart where you spell a word that's like super common and you look at it and you're like, is this right? Did I spell this right? Oh man, words are hard. Words are hard. All right, so the Pel Pelagir Marines doing a great job. Now they're sending in another fresh unit of Pelagir Marines. Fresh, relatively speaking. Trying to hold the line against these guys. Uh, but really at this point, both forces are pretty exhausted. Both armies are exhausted. And the artillery, they're going to even the odds here. Gondor infantry are going to lose a lot of morale uh, before even facing the infantry of Umbar. And uh, now they're going to really have a tough time holding these, uh, these lines. Because look, they're already shaken. And now he's going to fall back. He's going to do a tactical retreat, which is pretty smart. A tactical retreat. Now we got some spears going in against the Corsair Black Guards. Numenorian Shield Guard, is that it? Numenorian? That's got to be it. Okay. I redeemed myself there a little bit. Just a little bit. Let's go back over to this side. Gondor's still holding, but I don't know how much longer they can hold. Their troops are so depleted over here. Get back. They've got to get... No! Why are they just letting them in? Uh, it's too late. They just lost it right there. The fact that they moved out of the way. Look, and now there's a gap for more uh, troops to come in. And sure enough, look, he's going to flank around these guys. Gondor might have just lost the battle right there. I mean, if you look at the bounds of power, it's not looking great for them anyways. But, oh, wait, wait. We got reinforcements. Okay, hold on. Baconfish 302. 
He's going to try to plug that gap, but he's got to do it quickly. He's got to move fast. Look at We got Hoshari just pushing through the lines. Gondor's got some Gondor archers in the back. So it's just a big just brawl in the inner courtyard, I guess. The, the inside the walls here of Isengard. This is going to be a close battle, guys. I mean, the balance of power is shifting back in favor. Or not back in favor, but it's shifting a little bit in favor of Gondor. Not overall. It's still in, it's still in favor of the attackers. Here comes a fresh unit of garrison forces. And nice, we've got the shielded fountain guard. That's a great maneuver there. And now they're pushing even more Gondor uh, Gondorian forces around the flank. So the defenders might just have a, a, a chance here. They might just have a chance. Might. They've got to quickly kill off Umbar. Oh, another, unfortunately, another general for Gondor has been slain on the battlefield. And that's really going to cause some morale issues for Gondor. New player supporting his infantry with his archers in the back here. Artillery, very risky, risky artillery. I mean, I, I don't even know why he's going for those shots. Uh, because he risked killing his own men there, which I think he did get a little bit of friendly fire. Uh, but it wasn't anything game-changing. It's still, ooh, look at these guys, the Royal Guard over here. Oh, wow, they're still going for the artillery. They're going after these uh, shielded fountain guard. It just feels like Umbar is desperate to kill these guys. And he doesn't want to waste the infantry on them. So he's going to try to kill them from afar with the catapults. <laughs> that sound is from Battle for Middle-Earth 2. And it's the wild men who spawn. And I was like half expecting... Uh, the wild men, that ability, you know, where you spawn the wild men in your, your, your enemy's base. I half expected that. I was like, whoa, who's spawning wild men? This is crazy. That's funny. So Gondor still has life over here. Um, unfortunately, they are getting beat up here by some skirmishers. They had to charge out some... Oh, look at these guys. The Brotherhood of Shadow Blades. Yeah, they had to charge out some infantry. Now the pikes are moving in. This is a desperate sally out by Gondor. Hoping to kill, uh, strike these guys down so they don't continue to throw their uh, their projectiles into the pike formation. Excellent. So nice little fights going on here. The archers charging in. Right in the, the rear of the uh, fountain guard. Victory will be ours. Victory will be ours. Nice. Bounce of power is still in favor, but I, I'm not going to say that it's impossible for Gondor to come back. They still have a good little, uh, you know, a good amount of strength they could use. But it's not good that the Fountain Guard are surrounded. Oh, but look at this counter flank by the Athelian Rangers, who are not amazing in melee. I mean, they're pretty good. They're Rangers, but uh, they got to be careful there. More artillery fire coming down. Oh, just hitting some of these Kara Andro Swordmasters. Now they're going to charge in. So he does have some Gondor reinforcements trying to hold back. Hold back Harad and Khan. A new player sending in some Gondor infantry. They might just hold. They might just hold against these guys. Yeah, they're pretty much spent. We got a Chieftain Vanguard. We have uh, the Nomadic Marauders. We do have some elite forces over here, but Gondor might just win on this side. Which will be huge. Because they need to quickly win on this side. Because, yeah, Umbar. <laughs> Umbar making their way. But this is such a close battle. But the Bounds of Power. Oh, another epic rally there. I'm loving, I love rallies. Like, that's my thing. It re for me, it makes the battle very immersive. I, like, if I programmed a game, it'd be like rallies left and right. It'd just be like every time you make a move, like a, a tactical move, like shift units around, rally. When you go in for a charge, rally. You know, and make them different rallies. It's kind of like the way, you know, that's how you gave out commands, right? Your rallies. Um, so that, that, I don't know. I thought that's cool. Uh, but there we go. Yeah, that's the last of Gondor's, this fountain guard. They're going to die. 
unfortunately, like, they're doing a good job, but they're just so outnumbered. There's just not a chance. And now they are going to push all we have defending the uh, the guard. Ooh, someone lost a general there. Oh, yeah. Ally finally, the attacker is finally uh, losing a general. Uh, but, yeah, Gondor archers, they're going to try to hold and defend the flank of this uh, force over here. But it's just not going to happen. And, yeah, sure enough, finally, after, like during the whole match, Harad has finally broke through uh, this, this stand by Gondor. And they're so depleted over here. So I think it's safe to say that the attackers are going to win this one. And this will continue the motto, the, the saying of defenders never win. <laughs> and there we go. This is the last of Gondor's infantry making their last stand. We'll go ahead and fast forward because I think it's quite clear that the battle has been decided. And there you go. Victory is ours uh, for the attackers. This was sent in by Jay Monster. I want to give a big thank you to Jay Monster for the battle replay. He did very well here, getting the most kills. Uh, so that's actually pretty impressive, being the attacker. Usually attackers don't get as many kills, but I think his archers did a really good job. His infantry did a great job. Uh, then Vizlak also doing very well. Von Mountain doing very well. King Strategist, he really took on a, a, the brunt of the defense, I think. Uh, so that's why he didn't perform as well in kills, but, you know, he did his part. Uh, looking at the defenders, Lango only getting 571 kills. The rest of his allies doing pretty well, but it was a close one, guys. It just wasn't, just wasn't enough for the defenders. If they had, like, maybe three more units, they probably could have won this one. That's just how close it was. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me here in Isengard in Middle-earth. It was a lot of fun. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, a comment, share, and of course, subscribe for more epic battles in Middle-earth. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.